Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop, and a welcome to Fail Friday, the series where I either fix your baking fails, my baking fails, or I tell you how to avoid a fail. And this week, we're on to another baking business tip kind of video. It's not really so much tips as me telling you how I started my baking business and the steps that I took to get there, the exact steps that I took, and how I failed the first time around, and how I fixed it. So let's get into it. So the very, very first thing I did when I was starting to think of opening up my baking business was I decided to go in on it with a friend. Now, this was a decision that was very much made on a whim. I remember I was sitting in the university parking lot and I had like a two hour period where I didn't have any classes. So I was already kind of starting thinking up doing my own business, but I really hadn't thought all the details through. Well, when you're bored, you tend to embark on these things. So I remember calling up my friend at the time and just kind of talking to her about it. And then we really started getting excited about the business model of this bakery. Now I was super, super uneducated about what it really meant to run an at-home baking business. And at the time, YouTube was kind of a different world, so there wasn't a whole lot of guidance on how to run your own baking business. Even various baking forums didn't really have a whole lot about the baking business side of things. So I was really just going off of what I thought business was really like. It's not like I studied business in university or anything either, so I literally had no clue what I was doing. Well, my problem really started with the fact that my friend, as lovely as she was, she didn't have any baking experience herself. So the way that we set up our business model is that she would do all of the baking and I would do all of the decorating. Now, at the time, I kind of just thought, well, baking is easy. You're going to be able to follow a direct guide on how to make the recipes. And really having somebody do all of the baking is going to take a lot of the work out of what I do. So that's kind of what I was thinking. And then for some reason, I also thought, okay, well, we'll split the profits 50-50 or 60-40 or something of the sort. We came up with a random number. Now, when you're working with a partner, this is really, really difficult. And there was a lot of people around me that said, oh, you shouldn't do that. You should do it by yourself kind of thing. And I just didn't want to listen to them. I wanted to think that I knew what I was doing when it came to this, when really I knew nothing at all. So anyway, time goes on and we actually start up everything. We have a whole business name for our company. We registered the name. We really wanted to go about it the right way. And we really talked to her mom and her dad about how we should do this. Now, at the time I was quite young. I was only 19 years old. So I really didn't know what I was doing and I was still really heavily relied on my parents for guidance for things. So me following the guidance of someone's parents just seemed to fit hand in hand. Fast forward, we get all of the things registered. We have branded stickers, we've got cards, we have everything that we think we need in order to start a baking business. So we get our first couple orders. They go well, and I spend a lot of time on them. I think I did a cookie bouquet of like a dozen cookies, and I ended up spending almost eight hours trying to do these cookies. She did the baking, and I did the decorating. Now, if any of you have ever baked and decorated, you know that that really isn't the same amount of time. It's a lot more time to do the decorating portion than it is to do the baking portion. Even when you get a lot better at this, it still outweighs in the decorating side. So we weren't really splitting the profits actually correctly. On top of that, we were charging pennies. So I think we were like barely able to cover the cost of how much it actually costs to make these things. We also hadn't really discussed who would buy the flour and who would buy the sugar and how would we keep things organized when we lived in such different places. So after a while, maybe after about four or five orders, I started realizing that really this wasn't going to work. On top of that, my friend didn't really know how to decorate and didn't really have a passion for baking. It wasn't that she didn't want to do well in the business, it's just that her passion was more the business side of it. 
And unfortunately, with a baking business, there really isn't that much business side that needs to be handled separately like the way you would for a commercial bakery where you need an accountant, for example. You don't really need that for an at-home baking business. On top of that, we were renting out commercial level kitchens. And the reason that we were doing that is so that we were all up to code. But the problem is, is that it was really, really expensive to rent these kitchens. And so we were doing that, but like not charging enough. And it was really hard to get together as well. Like I said, I was a full-time university student. She was doing her own thing. We also lived kind of far apart. So it just really wasn't working out. Unfortunately, it kind of ended not so great, but I was warned about not doing that. So I really, really think that if you're going to go into a partnership with somebody, it can totally work. However, you both need to be really, really great decorators because that's mainly what a baking business is. Unless your baking business is more centered around like muffins or pies or something like that. I also think that we should have done it so that it was order based, not so much we split every order 50-50. It should have been, okay, I'm busy, you take this order. I think if I were to do a partnership type thing, that would be more like how it would be. It would be, hey, do you wanna take on this order? If you take on the order, then you get to keep all the profits and you do all of the work for that order. And that basically is how it would work. That way you're gaining more clientele and you can also accommodate more orders at once. But to actually split an order 50-50 where you don't live together, is really, really challenging. And also, like I said, her work wasn't even going to be decorating. It was all going to be the business side, like wrapping the cookies and writing emails and all of that kind of stuff. But really, when you're writing the emails to people, you're quoting, you're doing the ordering process. And like I have said in past, when the person who is not decorating is doing the ordering and the quoting, it can get really sticky. So we didn't know much. We were just young and trying something out. So eventually I had to say, I'm really sorry. And I remember it was this one particular order that was the straw that broke the camel's back. And at the time, I think we were only getting like $200 a week from this order. It was like for some sort of cafe and they wanted to have our cookies in stock every week. And if I had to split 50% of the profits of this order, literally we are losing money and I am doing a lot of the work. And there just isn't enough work for somebody who's not doing the decorating. It's not like a commercial bakery where you actually have to interact with people and you have to keep, you know, cupcakes on the shelf and make sure everything's stocked. Everything was pretty much custom order. Stock orders were really not that popular then either. So unfortunately we had to cut ties. I did now that I was all on my own I couldn't keep the name I had to start from scratch all over again now of course I was the one that had mainly interacted with these customers and I had drawn the orders in so it wasn't as if I lost that customer base that I had built up it was just that I had to go under a different name and I remember feeling really sad about it because my parents were very much like oh I love the old name so much more what happened to that but whatever and from then on, I was Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. And I've been Sweet Dreams Bake Shop for over a decade now. So the next step I took is I rebranded everything. My friend actually made the logo design that I used for a long time for Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. I still use it on my Facebook page, but I don't really use it for much other than that. But at the time, I printed off stickers, I printed off business cards, and I kept having to reprint because things were constantly changing. So I was doing that for a while. And I've said this in videos before, but really that's where a lot of the failure lies. You don't need all of that fancy pants branding. It's very expensive to continually buy stickers and business cards. I mean, yes, the stickers do add a really nice touch to your boxes and it makes things look more professional. But I gotta say, your work speaks for itself. If people like your work, 
they're not really going to care if you have a sticker or not on there. I will say though that if you want to keep continually, you know, putting your business out there, then attaching a business card is the right move. I personally, in the last two years when I was still running my at-home baking business, I did not put any cards of any sort on there. People just started giving out my number and that's how people would reach me. that after everything had dissolved with my partnership and I had moved under a different name and was starting to work under that name I started fulfilling orders and I started fulfilling a lot of them and it was a lot of late nights I'm talking I was up until 3 in the morning about two to three times a week because what would end up happening is I would take on a lot and you know I'd have a university essay due or I had to teach piano after university, so I didn't have time to fulfill an order. So it was a lot of panicky orders that I had to fill. And unfortunately, I just really didn't have a refined process. On top of that, I lived at my parents' house still, and my mom is super, super neat and tidy. So she never wanted us to cook or bake in the house ever. So I always had to wait until she left the house and then I would get to my baking. And I always had a really small, small window to do all of my baking and decorating. And because of that, I had to stay up super, super late so my mom wouldn't have to see me decorating or see me making a mess, I guess. So basically, that's why I had a lot of late nights. And it really honestly was not conducive. I had no business really running my own at-home bakery when I was living at home. It was such a big burden on my parents to have that mess in their house, although I did try to clean it as best as I could. And it was really hard having to confine everything. And it made a lot of my baking practices worse because I couldn't re-whip icings and I couldn't do those things at particular times of day. So I really, really had to splice it in where I thought I could. The next thing that happened was I finally got married and I moved out of my house. As soon as I did that, I was really, really able to get a good grip on how to run a proper at-home baking business. I went and I got myself a job at a bakery so I could really learn and refine my practices. And I learned so much working at a commercial bakery. I really think that if you're just a hobby baker or an at-home baker, but you want your business to take off, working at a commercial bakery really gives you some valuable insight that you honestly can't gain anywhere else. And I don't think you need to work there for years and years and years, though I ended up doing that because I loved my boss and I loved the people that I worked with and I loved my job so much that I was willing to continue working there as I was working full time as well. You learn how to work a lot faster and you just learn what the best practices are in order to make sure that your baked goods are packaged properly, to make sure that they're done on time and you're also learning invaluable skills. After I started working at the bakery, the next thing that I did was I started introducing cakes into my menu. Before, I had only done cookies. I was even known as the cookie lady. People would always call me the cookie lady, but I really found that actually doing cakes was a lot more lucrative than just doing cookies. And I learned how to price my cookies a lot better. So in the end, like especially now, my prices for my cakes and cookies are pretty even keeled. And I'm a lot faster at doing cookies now than I was before because of my time that I spent at the bakery. And I was also able to refine my cake skills a whole lot. I did learn from YouTube originally, but I was able to get to a level where I felt like I was comfortable selling cakes. I should also mention that prior to working at the commercial bakery when I was still living at home, I did a lot of farmer's markets. And that's one mistake that I really, really wish I had never done. It was so much work for such little payoff. After my time at the bakery, I went full speed ahead and I was selling cakes left and right. And I'm going to be really upfront and honest, I was making very, very good money from it. So a lot of people would ask me, why are you still doing this? Why don't you just take your bakery full time? And the truth is, eventually you all know I quit being an at-home baker. And here's why. So I had my 
first child. But surprisingly, that didn't slow me down. I was even stuck in the hospital super, super sick from giving birth to my child in that first month. And that still didn't stop me. About two months later, I was back on my feet making cakes and cookies again. And then as time went on, I finally secured my dream job and I was working at a place that I really, really loved. I continued to make cakes, teach piano and teach. And I really, really loved it. And I was making really good money, like I said. But eventually I had my second child and it was at that point right before I had him that I decided I'm not going to be making any more cakes or cookie orders for the public anymore. And a lot of it came from stress. I was very stressed out whenever I would hand off a cake to somebody. Now I know that sounds a little bit strange because I was really happy with my work and I was confident in my work, but I was always so worried that somebody would find something wrong with my work. And I know that sounds ridiculous because I literally sold thousands of cakes on my own, but it's just that feeling that I had. And after a while, I decided it's not worth the stress for me personally. Now, this isn't me trying to tell you not to run your own at-home baking business, because like I said, I did it for almost over a decade and it was great. It was wonderful. I was afforded a lot of really cool opportunities because I did that. But after a while, I did want to focus more on my family and I just couldn't deal with the stress of, you know, raising children, which is natural, and the stress of having to fulfill cake orders. Like I've mentioned before, I really only got one or two personal complaints from my at-home baking business. Several, I think, when I was working at the commercial bakery, but that didn't really hurt me personally the way that the complaints at my own at-home baking business did. And I just needed to weigh the pros and cons for myself. If it was worth that type of stress to continue making cakes and cookies. And for me, it just wasn't. On top of that, I started to evaluate what was important for me. And what was important for me was I wanted to continue making my craft. And no, you can't just sit there and continue to make cakes and cookies for nobody. So I decided that I would just give my baked goods to friends and family and do the occasional cake for them. So that's kind of what I am doing now. And I've been really, really happy with my choice. But I will say if you're looking to build an empire and to be very financially successful, do it. You will make it, you will get there. You will get to a point possibly where you are able to just turn this into your job and then eventually step into having a commercial bakery if that's what you want. But I will say the jump from baking at home to commercial bakery is huge. So that's basically my story of how I became an at-home baker, why I don't do it anymore, but how I still kind of do it. <laughs> And I hope that if you faced any early failures in your baking business, that that didn't stop you. It certainly didn't stop me. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Speedy Fam. Right now, I'm uploading daily, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye! Be sure to submit your baking fail, and it could be fixed by next Friday.